shoulder. Legionnaires, Rykon here, and welcome back to Going Medieval. We're here with Jonathan, Lelion, and Edith. And we are in the quiet little storehouse that is Hexham. But of course, we know that there is more beneath the surface. And that is what we're going to continue working on today. First of all, with Jonathan running in here, we now have our first bedroom. And hey, look, it's nothing more than just a hay bed in a stone room. But it's going to get better eventually. And surprisingly, this makes them quite happy. <laughs> we still have a little bit more expansion to do on this side of our main hall here. Once we've got that done, we're going to bring that research table inside. And we're going to get Lelion doing a little bit of research for us. Because, uh, well, it's summer now. And we've been here for two weeks. But there's a lot that we need to do in the way of food preservation before those colder months set in. But for now, Lelion is going to be very busy running backwards and forwards, taking all this limestone out of here for us. And look at that, we've finally got that last little bit of mining done there. We're going to grab that research table, drop it inside, a temporary spot for now. As I've kind of said before, the library's probably going to be off towards the side here, with the rest of our industry wrapping around here. And so now that we've got that back in here, we are going to chuck on, let's say, another 15 for the time being. And something that we need to keep in mind with these chronicles is we do actually need to keep them. Huh. Well, look at that. When David arrived, his bones were prominent and his hair fell out in clumps. Ah, it doesn't exactly look like a good meal. Hexam, people stared at this wretched, starving soul. Desperation was writ on David's face and he pleaded, would you take him in? All right, well, we can get a little bit of information about David Drake here, an ambitious army cook. But yeah, we can't see whether or not he is uh, a would-be immortal like us here in Hexam. So I think it's probably still worthwhile us taking him on. Let's see, David. David, 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 how are we looking? Unfortunately, well, not so much. Iron stomach, ill-favored and disfigured. My poor lad, you've had a hard life and uh, well, I think that hard life is going to continue. So it's not really worth us eating him right away, right? He, he's starving himself, so we'll let him eat and we'll let him work for a little bit but then when we need to we're gonna munch I, I guess think of it this way David is walking a food storage for us and I think what we're gonna be able to use David for primarily is just hauling hauling a whole heap of stuff out of Hexham and once we've got that done well then David you're on the menu we can also do a little bit of this as well with David uh, just give him a whole heap of work. Four hours sleep? Is that going to be... We could go for three. Uh, we'll stick with that for now. And we will give him another bed just for now. I am going to be intrigued to see who claims this bedroom. It's effectively going to be whoever goes to sleep first. Bloody better not be you, David. Oh, and it looks like Lelion is the lucky winner. And Edith. Go team. Oh, you know, that'll be because the other bed wasn't constructed in time, I think. Look at that. David's up. A early riser, of course. And he's going to be just working hard to get all of that limestone on out of there. Excellent. Okay, Edith has finished another bedroom over there. So we're going to go and grab that bed and get it shifted in. It looks like Jonathan is nearly done there as well. There we go. Thank you, Edith. So we now have our three bedrooms all set. And we have some research that we can look at. So we could go into furniture, which would give us beds and chairs and everything else. What I really want to get into though is preserving food. That's going to give us the smokehouse and it's also going to give us shelving for our food. We need 20 books for that. So let's go for that before we spice things up. That means five more chronicles, please. And now that all of this is done, we can actually start thinking about our defenses. And one of our main ones is going to be this little shooting gallery that we have up here. So we are going to need a staircase that's going to take us up towards there. So we're going to start mining away at this. Now, do not fear if you see their settlers are exhausted. It's just David Drake. He's fine. Thank you very much, Edith. She's just finished that off for us there. So we're going to have a look at chucking in some stairs there. So we'll need to pull some things out of there first, it looks like. So for our defenses, it looks like we're going to have to work on the front 
first of all. And that we will, as we can't just build the staircase there from what I have seen so far. Okay, fantastic. We can get into preserving food now. So let's get that unlocked. And the first thing that we're going to want to do with that is start to put shelving in down here, which means that we're probably also going to want to uh, expand it out a little bit. Let's just start by having them kind of around like this. Obviously, we need to have an entry point here, and then we can kind of just go along like that, and then we can have the alley kind of continue on over that way. We'll just see where this gets us first of all. And of course, that is going to need a fair amount of wood, so we're probably going to have to designate some more trees to be chopped down in the area. Jonathan, Jonathan, excellent. Okay, the shelves are coming together well. And we've had yet another goat birth, so they are finding enough to eat out here just by themselves. Eventually, uh, they're going to be a problem for other wildlife in that we're going to have wolves and other things that will come for our goats. We haven't really worried about pinning them in at this stage. I'm sure we will eventually, but right now it isn't a priority. We've got our eyes on you, though, floating wolf. And of course, you're not floating. You're just hanging up there in the hills. Now we have Jonathan rising up that smokehouse and obviously you know you'd want to have a little bit of ventilation in here but i'm sure it's going to work out just fine so for smoked meat we want to make sure that we are smoking our raw human meat and for here we probably just want to fuel it with sticks as well most of our things are fueled by sticks where possible and so for our meals i think what we'll probably end up doing is just putting it down to let's just say 20 for now i think that's fine once we've got 20 we'll start preserving what meat we have well, it looks like we're going to be able to access furniture at this stage so yeah let's get it we will start improving their lives and so for the purposes of construction we're just going to be chucking a temporary stick S up here just so that we can get up to this upper level and work around and for some reason this bedroom just does not want to get used everyone just seems to uh like sharing this one and it still says that it's a private bedroom when they wake up so i guess if it's working it's working ah <sighs> David is uh, rather upset, unfortunate. He's done a great job here, hauling everything out, you know. Solid work, David Drake, but I think the end may be nigh for you, my friend. Yes, it's that time again. Time for ritual sacrifice, I suppose you might say. And look, you know, David, David's fighting back. Um, and he's down. Oh boy. Now... I think we'll kind of leave it to Lillian and, and, and Edith here, see who ends up getting the killing blow. I don't know if they will enjoy just killing anyone. Obviously, this is going to upset them because it is one of our colonists, but we can see killed someone, but also friend died. <laughs> Conflicted emotions, you know? Yeah, all the same. David, your life, your sacrifice will not go to waste. Wow, it is amazing how long some of the effects kind of stick around for when it comes to consuming human flesh. Unfortunately, Friend Dive does stay around for a while, five days, so we don't want to stack that where possible. If we do have a group of people here, we don't want to be killing them all at once. And there we go. Jonathan has got David for dinner. Right now at this stage, I think we are going to focus on nothing else but trying to get this area uh, mind out. It's going to take us a while to do it, but it's going to be worth it when it comes to having better defensive capabilities. So we've got some new and improved chairs for the dining room. I think we probably will still stick with the stone stool just for these two here because I guess they can be sitting either way while they're working. Well, look at that. It's Edith's birthday today. And oh my gosh, they're using all the rooms properly. Amazing. You know what? Looking at these rooms here, I think we're going to go and chuck in the new beds just over to the side there. I feel like that will work out okay for us in terms of our feng shui. We're going to have a look at deconstructing all those beds as well. Hey, our influence is rising. Flourishing Hexam grows more influential in the region with each day that passes. This is sure to attract more settlers and perhaps garner unwanted attention from other settlements. I mean, that's brilliant that's exactly what we want other settlers and you know the people to come and attack us our ladies are finally starting to chip into the walkway up here there are going to be some bits that are a little bit trickier 
to get to, like this part here, but we should be able to work at it from behind. And then of course, once we've got that all mined down, we'll finish taking away the rest of that here. But the idea is that we can have our archers up here as folks try and bash down the front door. And then once they eventually do get inside, we'll have the shooting gallery up here where they can shoot down at them. And then of course, once they are finally inside, we can defend from this position here. Oh, a lone traveler. A rangy hawker empties their pack, spreading a selection of oddments on a linen cloth on the ground. I buy and sell things that take my fancy on the road. They say with a crooked smile, take a look if you like. Well, lone traveler, hey there, merchant, how are you doing? Godwin Malthus. So, Godwin, we can't really see anything about uh, what you can do. Not that we could try and recruit you anyway, but I think we might, you know, do what we do when Godwin arrives. Oh, one thing that I haven't thought about here, <laughs> and something that we probably need to do, uh, you know, before anything else, is also carve out the center here. Yeah, because we do need to be able to see down to the shooting gallery. That shall be important. Oh, and look at that. Godwin is here already. Wonderful. Okay, well, let's get our two ladies out. And the reason why we're using them more than just Jonathan to uh, attack our foes is they get a big bonus from from killing someone. So, uh, yeah. Godwin, buddy. Hi. How are we doing? Welcome to our home. I hope you're nice and warm. Let's pop in here, Edith, Lelion, and, uh, and do what we do. Now, they're from the Church of the Third Coming, and, uh, yeah, we're gonna have some enemies. A fair few enemies. Uh, Edith, go and, go and jump in there as well. Let's, uh, Let's finish this poor sod off. God, when I'm, I'm so sorry that it has to end like this for you. Go on, in you go. Edith is heading in as well. And that'll do it. That'll do it. And, oh boy, alcohol. Well, there's not much of it there, but still, we got resources. And we have a dead merchant to take care of. And the two of them... <laughs> <laughs> just happily easing after that uh yep there we go and oh boy that's that's stacking up nicely they are they are rather happy they are even though we haven't had any religious activities since the very beginning of the game i swear once we have this defensive structure here carved out we are most certainly going to have a look at putting in some of those facilities for them. Ah, excellent. We're nearly at the point where we're going to be able to start to carve out this section here so that we can finally get that interior staircase up in place. We stole Lilion away for a moment so that we could get a little bit more research done. Stone block cutting is next up for us. And I think we'll probably try and repurpose the space here. So let's deconstruct that sleeping spot. Might not be big enough, really. Uh, I mean, it's it's tight, but uh, yeah, that'll work for a stonemason's workshop out here. I mean, by this great big pile of stone, that helps. Now that we have this here, we can ask for some limestone bricks to be chopped into shape. And so, yeah, making bricks is a non-skilled craft. You know what, Jonathan, we're going to get you doing that for us for the time being. And we're going to get Lelion back to working on carving all of this out up here. And so I know right now there is a bit of a strange overhang to this, but that's not going to be sticking it around forever. We are going to be kind of walling it off so that it kind of just fits uh, snug into the mountain here. Something that we will need to do sooner rather than later is chuck in a wooden beam across here though, as that will stop the ceiling from collapsing in on top of us. We've already lost a little bit up here. That's why this section is missing. So. That's something that I will deal with. We might even just end up carving that away, just for the sake of it looking cool. But cool things come secondary to security. Oh, we can actually make these really quite quickly. So we might just want to say maybe maybe 200 or something like that. Well, it's been a little while since we've had anyone show up here. So I believe we might need to start hunting some of the wildlife that is around here. But Jonathan is going to make quite the hunter, so I'm sure he's going to be fine. We'll just let him, yeah, head on out there and see what he can do. He's not always going to succeed, but this will actually give him a chance to improve his marksmanship over time. <laughs> they don't seem to learn, do they? 
<laughs> Merchant caravan. I see. A scent of spices on the breeze. Hmm. Is it just from the merchant or is it the merchant? <laughs> well, it precedes the arrival of a merchant caravan, lifting the spirits of Hexham's inhabitants. Do they bring furs, cloth, or tidings from the wider world? I have so much to offer you good people. The mercer cried out, Come, let's make a deal. Ah, and what a deal we shall have, friend. Oh, no, that's a whole ass caravan. Okay, <laughs> that changes things. Oh, boy. Um, yes. Uh, well, they're not super well armored, but obviously there are a lot more of them than there are of us. <laughs> <laughs> so um, maybe we'll just play nice for now <laughs> because uh, yeah unfortunately we don't have our defensive structure ready to kind of take on those numbers as of yet hmm. uh, Edith is doing a fantastic job though she's nearly got all of this uh, completely mined out and hey look we can finally put in that internal staircase and obviously with these areas here, we need to make sure that we are flooring them over just so it's not open to the floor below. Well, I suppose we could have a chat with them, couldn't we? Who, Who's going to be our best when it comes to speechcraft? Edith is at seven and she's not happy right now. Um, you know what, Lilion, how about you go and have a, a chat there? Okay, and so we're finally seeing the trade screen for the first time here. We can see a whole heap of stuff that they have and uh, that we have. So obviously our goods are on the side here. And there might be some things that we are willing to trade here. Heretic crown. That sounds fun. <laughs> We can also yeah, sort by the value here. Our mechanical components are worth the most, along with our chronicles, of course. I guess the thing is, I don't know if we actually want to buy anything at this stage. If we had some more limestone blocks, we could probably sell them for an okay amount. But yeah, we'd have to sell a lot of our limestone to be able to uh, make up anything here. Honestly, it's probably seeds that would be one of the most important things that we could get from them. We haven't really done any growing as of yet. I also don't know if we want to, you know, we've been surviving by ourselves just fine and I'm sure that will continue. We'll let them stay here for a, a little while longer. Unfortunately, this isn't as simple as RimWorld where we can just lock them in a room and, you know, make them die of heat exhaustion. It's probably possible it would just be difficult and we don't we can't afford to have them um turn on us and oh boy it's here already autumn it's blustering in with crisp mornings and cooler days it is the season to prepare for winter tailoring warm clothing and stocking up on food and supplies well of course we don't tailor here do we no we have more than enough clothing coming in from our um guests yes of course, it will be a research that we do eventually, but right now, you know, we've got other things to worry about, don't we? And we've got Jonathan finally working on this internal staircase here. It's a nice limestone block staircase, so it's a little bit higher quality. And because of that, we can go and take down this outer wall here. We can even start mining away at that front here, just so that they won't have any way to uh, get us when we're posted up atop of here. And the Circle of Avalon are leaving. Yes, unfortunately, we weren't that prepared for you. Next time, eh? And under research, we're going to be picking up defensive structures next. So this is a much more nasty trap. But really, what we are after from that is the, uh, the good door. This one over here. We do need iron ingots for that, though. So that's going to be a little bit further down the line. These merlons here... That's what we're going to have out the, well, not there. That's what we're going to have up the top here so that we can kind of fire from them down upon our enemies. And we can even have a look at chucking those in now as I speak. So they're just going to be sitting along the front like this so that we can walk along them. And as you can see, our internal defenses are going quite nicely there. As soon as Edith has this last block out the way here, we're going to be able to put the rest of these Merlons in. And that will do that. So we now have proper defenses. It's been a long time coming and we've been lucky that we haven't had much trouble 
while we've been working on this. We do only have three settlers, and that might also be affecting that. Obviously, it makes it harder because there's a lot more work for these three to do, but they aren't consuming as much, are they? This too shall pass. Ah, an ailing traveller shuffled haltingly into Hexham. Given time to recuperate, she claimed she could work. But in the moment, they look pretty rough. Would Alewis be permitted to join and convalesce? Well, let's see. Lots of perks. So there is a possibility. Hmm. An inconspicuous roofer, you say? Let's have a look at you then. Unfortunately, we're not seeing what we're looking for. You are not a cannibal, so you won't be staying long term. But... I think we'll be able to make use of you before we really make use of you. We do still have quite a fair amount of stone just hanging out here. And uh, Alois over here is going to be able to help us get that all moved. I mean, she doesn't really need to rest yet, does she? You've got a little bit of life to hang on to. We will need a bed for her, however. So let's just go and chuck in just a basic hay sleeping spot for the time being. Ah, they're starting to stack up, aren't they? That's unfortunate. <laughs> Forlorn and desperate, Aiken stood accused of treason against the Kingdom of York by aiding and abetting the monarchy. I'm innocent, he sobbed. Will we grant Aiken asylum? Reprisals may follow. And a larger attack than we have faced so far. Two archers, two fierce marauders, and three marauders. We have no idea what his perks are. But of course, we have to try. We have to hope that there are others out there like us. Well, he's injured. So, my friend, let's have a look at you, eh? Oh, you poor soul. Precious and outgoing. You're not long for this world, my friend. We'll get you some tending, but you're not going to be staying long term. And the same goes for Alewis. We'll get him patched up at least a little bit to begin with but then he's going to be helping out with the hauling our bricks are starting to spread across the dining room and edith has nearly got the uh, first temple chipped on out we could just make it a double entrance to them yeah i think we're gonna have to and then no corridor there for now perhaps we'll go off in that direction but right we will need a secondary bed won't we so let's go and build a copy Oh, and it's Lillian's birthday, 24. I suppose the thing is, we are going to be able to keep these other two around for a little bit if these marauders show up because, uh, well, they're going to fill our uh, pantry up, aren't they? If we win, of course. Hey, look at that. We finally got space to build it. Our first shrine. <laughs> ah, and with our food stockpiles on low, we've got some friends. Violent extortionists from the Kingdom of York. Purvey's bailiff stood, arms crossed, legs splayed wide, a hefty northern woman not to be trifled with. Give Aiken over, she grunted. If ye want no trouble, the labourers behind her fidgeted, impatient to engage. Then they settle in for a night's drinking. Is Aiken, or Aiken, worth fighting for? Well, most certainly, as, uh, I would love to help him out to get the bonus. And then also, well, we're going to get all these bodies if we win. So, we get ready to fight. We stand our ground, refusing to give in to their demands, which also makes the Kingdom of York hostile to us. Let's get ready, folks. And I think that's where the incursion is happening from. And nine enemies have appeared. Nine. Oh boy. Well, they aren't heavily armoured. That we can work with. And right now, they are kind of... Oh, I was going to say, they're minding their own business, but uh, no, they are beginning their attack. So let's get into our position and see exactly where they are in relation to us. Okay. Right, we're here. They're up there. They're going to be coming down the hill towards us. Okay, so we have everyone rushing back in. Jonathan's going to be heading up the top. Uh, these two are just going to kind of hang back for the time being. And let's make sure that we get this door closed, eh? So the way we're going to do this is we're going to have Edith kind of off towards the side. Or she should be able to strike through there. If Lelion can hold. Jonathan, just be ready, my friend. We wait for them to arrive. Now, obviously, it would be fantastic if we had more archers. But, uh, yeah, we're defending this place with three people. We will do all that we can. We patiently wait. 
We can see the first of them making their way down here. Let's see, who is going to be the first unlucky soul? Garrett. All right, Garrett. Let's see how you uh, stack up against our friend here. Jonathan, get ready to take your shot. Do I need to tell you to take it? Oh, no, it looks like you've got this under control. Okay, a miss. Not a great start. And can you shoot from here? You can. That's exactly <laughs> what I like to see. Just keep on firing down. Yep, it's working. The door is holding for now, and we have the reinforcements. Oh, and Sigmund, of course, is an archer. Let's hope that uh, this is going to hold for us. I would like to try and take down the melee characters first, if possible, just because um, we should stand a pretty good chance at being defended by our uh, <laughs> our defenses here. I, as soon as I say that, we end up getting hit, and it looks like uh, Jonathan has changed his mind. He wants to go for Sigmund, but I want you to go for Seal down here if you can. Oh, that's, uh, that's a fair few archers. More than I would like. Come on, my friend. Get a shot here. Nothing yet, huh? He's evading shots down there. Ah, there we go. Something. Sigmund we might be able to just take out. And I'm thinking it... Yeah, you know what? Screw it. We'll go for the archer instead. Come on, buddy. Lots of those arrows are just reflecting off the side. Oh, there's two Sigmunds. We'll take down Sigmund Archer first. Jonathan, hold strong. Oh, he's really just changing. He's just shooting whoever the hell he wants to shoot. <laughs> Please concentrate here. There we go. A damn good shot. He's nearly dead. One more will do it, Jonathan. That's it. Excellent. Sigmund is now dead. Okay, so still lots of other archers back here. The door is holding for the time being. We're just going to try and keep on taking them out. He's holding. Jonathan, just keep on keeping on. Oh, the door is open. They are in. Okay, all right, so at this stage, I think we will shift inside. Let's try be over here if we can, Jonathan, and we'll try shooting down at Uthrid. I just got to hope that uh, they can't get an angle on us from out front. And if they can, we might need to... Ah, yeah, they totally can. All right, well, further around we go. We'll give that a shot and see if that'll work. We're probably going to have to get a proper wall on the outside for them to be able to retreat into here. Yeah, I mean... This is working. They're weakening. Another good shot there. I am slightly concerned by how many there are, but I'm confident in Lillian and Edith's uh, want for blood. Jonathan, though, is still getting peppered by these archers, which I'm not happy about. Redwald, we should be able to take you out. Let's see if we can. Jonathan, just keep it up, my friend. You're doing a great job here. We believe in you. We believe in you. Unfortunately, this angle is just not working out for us right now. Come on, buddy. There we go. He's nearly down. There we are. Excellent. <laughs> and they're fleeing. They are fleeing. Jonathan Withers. I keep on saying Winters, I think, but Withers, which is even better, was the bravest of the settlers, dealing the most damage and taking the most damage at the same time. Uh, obviously, we aren't going to let them just run away like this, so we are going to go after them. Jonathan, we're going to get you out on the walls. I want you to be shooting at whoever you can here. Oh, fantastic. Okay, Uthred ain't gonna make it. Yeah, just attack whoever you want. Redmond, whoever. Let's go for William if we can before he gets away. He might end up just getting away. Unfortunate, but we still got a few bodies out of this. Let's keep on attacking, ladies. Uthred. Oh, I, I, I think he's, he's just gonna get away. Yeah, keep it up. Keep going. Yeah, I think we need to tell them to continue to engage. As soon as they're running, they... They don't want to fight as much, but we'll make it happen. Edith, level 7 of melee, wonderful. The others have managed to escape right now. Jonathan, we need to make sure that you get treated immediately. So please, yeah, go rest, go sleep. We'll get those wounds treated. Lelion, we're going to need you to do the treatment for us. Let's prioritize tending those wounds. You can sleep whenever. And it looks like they're just going to continue escaping up the top here and off the map good for them but also good for us we have three bodies here that we are going to be able to process and a few weapons too we'll make sure <laughs> that we make good use of that and Lelion I'm gonna need you to keep at that we failed that tending there Jonathan we won't let you go untended P 
pierced cheek. I see. And so that was from one of the arrows, I assume. Can you do anything more for us here? No, it doesn't look like it. So I think it's just one of those things where... Oh, it has been bandaged. We should see that heal in time. Well, we survived. A pretty decent attack. But obviously right now, we still have some colonists who are not going to be here long term. Well, sorry, settlers. And it might not look like much yet, but our keep is coming together. Hexham stands strong. I have a fair bit of work to do on those defenses, but I'm happy with the progress that we've made today. So, I'd like to thank you all for joining me for yet another episode. If you enjoyed this one, please consider leaving a comment or a like to let me know if you enjoyed the show. And let's get to those bodies before the wolves consume them all. <laughs> for now, I have been Rykon. You have all been awesome. And until next time, stay tuned. And finally, I'd like to extend a great big thank you to the Legion on Patreon who continue to make content like this possible. If you too would like to join the Legion and support this channel, please do check out the Patreon link in the description.